First thing I need to mention is when test and tell the so-called positivist or traditional approach was crafted or designed 120 or so years ago, hundreds of thousands of jobs came onto the market. And there was a need for inventories and tests to test people and tell them what to do, the so-called person environment fit approach. But as you and I know, the times have changed considerably. Jobs are no longer guaranteed, the work environment will no longer hold you, so we needed to come up with an approach that is better suited to the needs of postmodern people in, a, in current society. Therefore, we decided to start designing qualitative assessment instruments, assessment and, and intervention instruments, in addition to the tests, we still use tests, but these days we also elicit people's multiple, many small or micro stories, integrate the stories and the scores, and help them not only choose careers, but also find a sense of purpose and meaning in their lives and make social contributions. That in a nutshell, I think, is what, what it is about. When I first joined the University of Pretoria in the year of our Lord 1985, many years ago, I was, I was tasked with the assignment of designing what we refer to as a qualitative workbook for career guidance, a mouthful. And over time, that questionnaire um, went through many iterations. Initially, I crafted, I tell you what, a 56 pager and it's now down to a few pages and the, the, the name of and the slant and the theoretical conceptual approach, everything has changed considerably. Then in 1992, I discovered, would you believe it, the typo on the answer sheet of the Jung personality inventor. And that was my Damascene moment. I discovered that the fourth continuum, whereas it should have been anchored by, by J on the left hand side and be on the right hand side, it was actually anchored the other way around. So the, the, the counselor, the, the, the psychologist would test you and tell you, Erica, you are a highly structured person and you would be taken aback, no, 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 I'm a creative kind of person. And the, the, the counselor would be told, this is what the test says and this is what would stand. And then, then I started reading on the work of the most eminent scholar in the history of our science, Marx and Vickers. I fell in love with the New Year approach. It really, really spoke to me, met Mark Sivikas, and ever since I haven't looked back, and I will never look back. Can I just reiterate? I still am willing to use tests, but I would rather use the qualitative approach alone than use tests without the qualitative approach. I know that gifted students often get very bored in classroom, especially when they sit in these restrictive environments. When there are many rules that don't make sense, if they question the rules, they get lambasted and they isolate themselves. They decide, well, I'm not going to say anything, I get criticized. So the new approach allows, in fact, encourages them to dream. There's also, for instance, a question in the, in the questionnaire that I've designed that says, what is your dream career? What are your dream careers? If you have more than one, tell me about it. They can write at length. So uninhibited, without any restraint, constraint, they express themselves freely. That's a big, big, big difference. Like I tell you what, the gifted people that become so inhibited, they love the approach and they and they would write as much as they wish and we allow them in both individual but also in group context to just talk and talk and narrate their career life stories so they can but do what we do we refer to as facilitate autobiographicity.
fall back on their own proven recipes, things that worked in the past in their life stories when change is imposed upon us. And you and I know that these days they have to navigate multiple challenging transitions. So they fall back on proven recipes from their own stories, they enact their, their key life themes, and they make a contribution to the world at large. The applicability, the import of the approach. Look, Erica, I think I presented keynotes and workshops in 50, 55, could be 60 countries across the world. And Mark Sebekas, like I said, the most eminent person, has taught me so many things. And Mark um, agreed with my stance that we need to find an approach that will work in group context, especially because I feel for people with disadvantage, especially any person with marginalization. That's my kind of human being. That's the person that I would stand up and, and support irrespective. I'm always going for the, for the underdog. So wherever I presented this approach live, it works. It works like a charm. And the, 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 the approach that I've designed, I've written a number of articles on many projects in group-based context in Africa, but also elsewhere, to show the applicability of the approach. Tell you what, it's just so exciting. I wish I could be granted another thousand, thousand years to still improve on, on the approach. My very dear friend Ruben Baron, one of the leading lights in the field of emotional social intelligence, during the writing of an edited book that Maurice Elias, Ruben and I co-edited, he would often ask me the question, Kubis, I keep on wondering how many gifted people, talented people, the likes of Mother Teresa, Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, Kofi Annan, Nelson Mandela, and can I repeat Mother Teresa because I so revere that woman, how many are we losing on a, losing on a daily basis? And that is so true, Erika, especially where I come from, like I said, the, the, the vast, vast majority of my projects actually happen in townships in rural areas where people have nothing, where they don't have hope, where they have nothing. And it's my, my job, self-imposed assignment, to rekindle a sense of hope, a sense of positivity. And I'm looking forward very much to this magic conference to maybe in some way inspire other other colleagues and especially maybe gifted learners, talented learners, to enact themselves, enact their key life themes and make a bigger contribution than they were planning to, to make before the, the presentation. Hopefully, hopefully we can sway the world to take care of the needs of people, especially with marginalization, to help them also realize their potential and make the contribution to humankind that they were destined to make.